In China, a popular sales model is to sell via live stream. Hosts present, explain, and recommend products in real time and answer questions through live streaming, encouraging viewers to place orders and make purchases. The year 2021 saw China's live e-commerce generate nearly 0.3 trillion US dollars in sales. In June 2022, the sudden rise of one company on China's live e-commerce platform garnered much public interest. The company is the new Oriental, previously known as China's tutoring giant. Its story is both heartwarming and at the same time, heartbreaking. In 2021, the Chinese government launched a double reduction policy to reduce the burdens of homework and off-campus training for students in compulsory education. It has dealt virtually a death blow to the many service providers in the industry. In early 2022, Yu Min Hong, the founder of New Oriental, China's tutoring giant, posted an article summarizing that New Oriental's market value had fallen by 90%, operating income had decreased by 80%, and 60,000 employees had been dismissed. Among them, nearly 20 billion renminbi, or 3 billion US dollars approximately, was spent on cash expenses such as tuition refunds, employee resignation N plus one, and rent penalties for teaching sites. Yu was later called the decent man by the Chinese media because he didn't sell tables and chairs to save the company when it was under massive capital pressure but donated nearly 80,000 seats of relatively new tables and chairs to rural schools. The value of the furniture plus transportation costs amounted to 30 million US dollars. Since 2000, Yu has insisted on one principle, namely, cash in the bank must be able to cover all the tuition fees paid in advance by students, and employees' salaries must be paid while the company is in operation. Aside from donating tables and chairs this time, New Oriental has done two other things. One is to promise unconditional proportional refund to the parents who have paid the fees. The other is to settle employees' salaries in an orderly and quick fashion without delay. This seemingly simple and normal business conduct is rarely practiced by entrepreneurs in China today. The vast majority of business owners would place these funds in high-risk investments, leading to a scenario when the company is on the verge of collapse. The owners would end up owing tens of millions of unpaid deposits to users on one side and huge debts to suppliers on the other. For example, in late June of 2022, China's leading music education institution, Little Musician, closed all of its offline stores in Shanghai and Guangzhou. The company has been exposed as involving more than 30,000 students and about 15 million US dollars in capital. Its teachers hadn't gotten their salaries for months and parents had trouble getting refunds. The company once made a claim that it had a state-owned background and that its tuition fees were supervised by a bank as a way to gain the trust of parents. A woman in Shanghai told overseas Chinese media that her daughter enrolled in Little Musician to learn piano in 2021 and paid about 9,000 US dollars. Due to the outbreak, she had only less than one-fifth of the lessons. Now she has learned that the school is facing closure and the tuition has become impossible to get back. She has no clue who to approach for a solution at this moment. According to the Chinese media, 21st Century Business Herald, education and training institutions are in different degrees of operational difficulties. Due to various reasons, such as the government's double reduction policy, the outbreak, and poor management. China's out-of-school education and training industry is conservatively estimated to have an output value of 120 billion US dollars and millions of people employed. When these training institutions shut down, it means that their employees lose their jobs. Against this backdrop, it is especially precious to see a company like New Oriental emerge after its transformation while adhering to some basic business ethics. In December 2021, New Oriental set up a wholly owned subsidiary to operate a live streaming program called Oriental Selection. Its legal representative is the person we saw interviewed earlier. He is the executive director and CEO of New Oriental Online. In the past six months, 
They have been broadcasting live bilingually. It took them six months to accumulate one million followers, but in June, its followers skyrocketed by 10 times in just one week. The sales results in the past six months were, in its owner's words, pathetic. Yet since June, sales have grown rapidly, and its sales now easily exceed 1.5 million US dollars per day. At the age of 23, Dong Yuhui became the youngest head of teaching and research at New Oriental. He is a senior English teacher who has taught more than 500,000 grade 12 students, students who need to prepare for the brutal entrance exams for college. To know more about China's entrance exam, please click the link below. Currently, teacher Dong has made a new stage out of the live streaming. In his own words, a teacher has become a merchandiser. Many people know him through his steak videos, where he popularizes the vocabulary for steak used in different scenarios. 12 pieces of steak. For instance, what is original cutting, medium well, 12 pieces of steak, 24 bags of seasonings and ingredients? The audience lamented, I don't know what to do, to place an order or to memorize the vocabulary. I have been asked many times in recent days, are those fancy phrases I blurted out easily pre-planned? I said there's no need to do so. Our eloquence in front of the camera is based on the books we've read for so many years. It was once found that 80,000 people who participated in his live streaming session greeted each other with, So you are here too! They accompanied one another, adding a rather warm feeling to the experience. In his live broadcast room, one can hear the topics of humanity, geography, history, literature, English, and other knowledge. Some visitors exclaimed, New Oriental has transformed itself, yet it feels like it hasn't changed at all. Oriental Selection has initiated a new way to sell merchandise through live streaming using content-based delivery. Through the host's bilingual explanation, the audience can not only get knowledge about the merchandise, but also refresh or learn English at the same time. It became a hit accidentally at the beginning, thanks to the differentiated and interesting style of bilingual live streaming. But the ongoing popularity comes from people's recognition of the anchor's literacy and level of thinking. The kid gets more interested in learning English, and has more vivid understanding of some fruits and vegetables that were unfamiliar to him. Perhaps it was the entrepreneurial journey of the company's founder, Yu Minhong, or the past workplace experiences of teachers like Dong Yuhui that resonated with the Chinese people who experienced similar losses during the outbreak. People have come out to support them in the live stream, projecting onto them their hope for a way out of their own predicament and a way up. At first, I thought I wasn't fit for the job and couldn't do it right. I denied myself for quite a long time and I could not fall asleep. Sometimes I walked around Peking University and the North Fourth Ring Road again and again until morning. I was quite sensitive and fragile back then and even wrote small essays to cheer myself up like, tough times don't last, tough people do. Many people come in to watch our live streaming are not for buying things or taking lessons. They could just seek happiness, company, and comfort here. I think it's very romantic to have 100,000 audience online simultaneously to hear you talking about life and dreams. The bilingual live stream of Oriental Selection, which they have been doing for half a year, only exploded unexpectedly in June 2022. It's not only due to the company's own initiative, but also by accident. The Chinese e-commerce giants have chosen several days of the year as e-commerce holidays in order to stimulate consumption. On these days, consumers can get super low prices on products. June 18th is one such promotional day. In the past few years, the top hosts of live e-commerce on June 18th were Via and Li Jiaqi. According to the Ministry of Commerce of China, the size of live e-commerce users is 388 million, accounting for nearly 40% of the overall online population. China's internet giants have made huge profits by cultivating and creating the top 1% of anchors. The top anchors receive a massive allocation of resources from the internet platforms and almost all of the market, advertising and traffic will be directed to the top anchors.
The Chinese media concluded that Via and Li Jiaqi's combined sales of about 3.1 billion U.S. dollars in one day on Promotion Day in 2021 exceeded the annual revenue of 4,000 listed companies in China's A-share market and that they received traffic equivalent to the entire population of the United States and Canada. But in June 2022, the two most popular sales anchors in China disappeared. Due to its tight finances, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, has turned its attention to live e-commerce. In addition to targeting high-profile entertainment figures, Via, who was hit with a 210 million US dollar tax bill, disappeared in December 2021. The disappearance of Li Jiaqi was quite dramatic. It was triggered by an ice cream cake. On June 3, 2022, when Li was selling Oreo cookies live and the live traffic reached its peak, his staff brought out an ice cream cake in the shape of a tank. With a smile on his face, Li was looking at the ice cream cake. Suddenly, the live video feed was cut off. After that, Li was completely shut out by all platforms. It is possible that Li and his fans didn't know that the tank ice cream cake had triggered Beijing's censorship mechanism. The iconic image of the Tiananmen Square Massacre on June 4, 1989, where students staged a protest, was an image of the tank man. Anything associated with this image is extremely sensitive to the CCP. In mainland China, the photo of the tank man and any information related to the Tiananmen Square Massacre have been blocked until today. An e-commerce operator named Sun Mei, who is close to Li's team, told Radio Free Asia that Li Jiaqi has complained within the team about being duped and victimized by his competitors. The e-commerce operator said the tax issue didn't bring down Li in 2021. This time, it was a setup. Li Jiaqi paid a very large sum of back taxes previously. He wanted to pay money in exchange for peace. The matter of tax evasion was thought to be over. This e-commerce trader also added that in order to ensure political correctness, the office of Li Jiaqi's team is like a Communist Party office. Li usually responds actively to the call of the Communist Party. According to him, if you are loyal to the party, the party will protect you. A Beijing resident working inside the CCP official system told Taiwan Central News Agency that when Li Jiaqi's live broadcast was cut off on the evening of June 3rd, his daughter, who is a university student, was quick to ask, What's with cake? Has it broken any taboos? He gave her a brief overview of the June 4th incident in a casual manner. The father's purposely downplayed attitude made his daughter continue to search for more information by climbing over China's firewall to discuss with friends in private until she saw the photo of the tank man. This Beijing resident said that young people are very curious. It took the CCP more than 30 years in one generation to erase the June 4th incident from young people's minds. But the curiosity sparked by cutting off Li's livestream has almost undone the Communist Party's previous work. It is because of the dramatic exit of Li Jiaqi, the top livestream host, that New Oriental accidentally received some traffic support from the live streaming platform under the background of no one being able to fill the gap during the e-commerce promotion festival in June. Whether it is Via and Li Jiaqi or the current New Oriental team, it is clear that Chinese people are very hardworking and resilient in general. It's just that the environment they live in is so unique that luck and misfortune can seem to happen simultaneously in a single day. They can be at the peak of glory today and may disappear or even be thrown into prison tomorrow. Even if the new Oriental team began to rise in the live broadcast industry, but how long they can last is still a concern. Those who are familiar with this sales model via live streaming know that the essence of this method is to compete in the supply chain and with exceedingly low prices. The Oriental selection mainly sells agricultural products, which are rather weak in these aspects. Uh, New Oriental is trying to enter the agricultural industry. We think selling agricultural products is a good way, especially in the early stage, because frankly speaking, we don't know the industry very well yet. Selling agricultural products will enable us to know how to select excellent products and what our live streaming fans and customers need. New Oriental is expanding to new categories. They promote New Oriental and other quality education-related products, such as books, smart hardware and software learning devices, and learning-related literature and educational supplies. 
In the category of books, Chinese e-commerce platforms such as Dongdong and Jingdong have been operating for many years. The price war between the two companies has made the profit margin of books very thin. For example, there were promotions that boasted 50 renminbi off for 100 renminbi purchase or 300 renminbi in gift certificate for 300 renminbi purchase. In particular, the Month of Reading More campaign by Pin Duo Duo has pushed the price of some books to 9.9 .9 or 6.6 .6 renminbi. It is not hard to see that the book market is not friendly to New Oriental in terms of price, which is very sensitive to users. However, what's most worrying is the overall economic situation in China. Over the past three months, dozens of Chinese cities have adopted lockdown measures of varying degrees, severely affecting people's livelihoods and spending power and disrupting global supply chains. As in previous years, there were many great discounts offered during 2022's 618 online shopping festival. But data showed that the shopping frenzy has subsided, especially among young people who are starting to tighten their purse strings. Chinese e-commerce giant Jingdong said its total sales rose 10.3% on June 18th, and in the 18 days leading up to it, well below the 27.7% increase seen in the 2021 campaign. Chinese media outlet Jiamian News published an article titled This Year's 618. Buy only one box of paper, consumers hold on tight to their wallets. Merchants cautiously promote in pursuit of profits. In the lead quote, it asked, who would go on a shopping spree in an environment of falling incomes and uncertainty? From this perspective, it is remarkable that 60-year-old Yu Min Hong has returned to the business scene with his teachers from New Oriental. At the same time, it also shows the difficult road that this generation of Chinese people has traveled.